Greetings, and welcome to part two of designing and building my Surly Disc Trucker. I think it needs a name. I think my drone should also have a name. Maybe a name will just evolve once I'm out on the road. If you got any ideas, put them in the comments down below. But a bike like this should probably have a name. I'm going to be spending so much time with it uh, and the drone. Uh, anyway, uh, the last video about designing and building a bike mainly talked about the frame, the drivetrain, that sort of stuff. Now I'm going to be talking about stuff on the bike, bags and water bottles and all that kind of thing. In fact, this will probably be a little bit easier if the bike is not up on the stand. So let's bring it down. So now we're back out in the garage. Now we're going to talk about bags. There's a lot of bags that are going to be on this trip because I'm going to be hauling a lot of stuff. Let me start with these brown guys. These are by a company in Arizona called Rogue Panda. And there are little images of pandas on here somewhere. Um, this is a stock top, top tube bag, which will carry things that I want to just grab, like a snack, or if I'm running into a store, my lock, that kind of stuff. Very convenient, right there. Water, they say water resistant, but I think probably waterproof. And I've covered it with waterproofing treatment. The zipper looks like it's going to be really tight, but I'm not going to put things in there that have to stay dry. But that's a Rogue Panda top tube bag. This guy was custom made. I had to send them pictures of my frame from different angles and stuff so they know the exact geometry. And then they custom made this. It took only a couple weeks. Um, and I specified that I wanted a reflective stripe, that I wanted it to be um, attached by a woven rope across the top, not by bolts. But I do want bolts here. It's got two pockets over here. This one's kind of shallow for things that I want to grab quickly, like my toilet paper and trowel. I hope not too quickly. Um, and then I'll be putting heavier stuff like water down here because I want the center of gravity to be pretty low. And then there's a much bigger pocket that goes the whole length of it over on this side. Right now, there's nothing in it except some spare spokes. Never know when you're going to need spokes. I hope never. Um, so that's a Rogue Panda. This is called a frame bag because it goes inside the frame and it's custom made, in my, this case, for my frame by Rogue Panda. Up top. There's a pair of bags. I'll give you a top shot now. These are called feed bags or, well, there's various names for them. These are by Revelate Designs. They're called the Mountain Feed Bag. And I've got two of them up here. One of which I'll have a water bottle for the water bottle I'm working on at the moment. And the other will be for other things that I just need to grab quickly while I'm on the road. Things like snacks, which is why it's called a feed bag. And these have little pockets on the sides where you can stick uh, a pair of sunglasses or whatever you might need to grab in a big hurry. There's several outside bags on these. It's very convenient. Revelate feed bags, two of them. And then as I mentioned on the tech video, my handlebar bag is by Rootworks. And this is where I'll be carrying my drone. The drone controller, when I'm not using it, when I am using it, the drone controller will be mounted here. Um, and any other small things. I think I've got some chapstick. I've got a um, hair shower cap in here. Why? In case it's really raining hard and I don't want this nice leather to get wet, I'll stick a uh, shower cap on it while I go in and get out of the rain somewhere, I hope. So that's a nice size bag for my drone and anything else I want to grab in a hurry. And this has nice connections on the sides for my bell and for my drone holder, so I don't have to be attaching things to the handlebar where they'd really be in the way. Um, the other cool thing about this bag is that there's a release down here that when I flip it, it really conveniently lifts off, and it's got a strap that goes around here, so I could just carry this into a store or something if I don't want to leave my drone out on the bike when I go inside, and my phone, which will also be attached here with this quad lock. So really cool Rootworks bag. I wish it was slightly bigger, but I like this so much more than any other handlebar bag that I've found that I'm happy to go with it. Now, how does this click right back on here? I know it's easy, there we go. And then flip the lever. And again, it's so secure that you could lift the whole bike by this thing, really nice. These things sticking out the sides that my bells and drone mount are attached to are called handlebar stubs because they are the diameter of a handlebar. They simulate a handlebar, but up here on that bag, 
I mentioned the quad lock case. This is where my phone will live so that I can be looking down at it for navigation when I'm using Ride with, Ride with GPS or whatever else. I love that. It's so secure. My phone will not be bouncing off. And my iPhone 14 Pro Max is water, very water resistant, basically waterproof. So I don't have to worry about getting wet when I'm getting in the middle of a deluge when I'm riding along with that. Okay, more bags. Now we're getting into Ortlieb. I have watched so many YouTube videos and been on so many review sites. And it, Roadworks is great and Rogue Panda and there's other companies like Revelate that make good bags. But the standard for bike packing is clearly Ortlieb. I talked about my Ortlieb tool kit before, or tool bag. They're waterproof. They last forever. I've just seen so many people going thousands and thousands of miles on Ortlieb that that's where I ended up. Better safe, right? And they hold a lot. First, let me talk about these. Well, what do we call them? Some people call them saddlebags. Some people call them panniers. Um, let's call them panniers, panniers. Uh, these things hold a lot. How much? This is overstuffed because I'm trying to make a point. Okay, bear with me. I'm trying to make a point. Um, this bag, one of my saddlebags, my panniers, has got in it, up first, always on top, my first aid kit, always at hand. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But then a sleeping bag, li bag liner. This one's silk. A sleeping bag liner. This one is flannel. Um, this is tech. This is a super waterproof bag holding my power brick and that sort of thing. This is my water filtration system. This is all my cooking gear in that big bag. Uh, my air mattress. I feel like I'm doing some kind of magician trick, you know. Uh, this is my pillow. Oh, my iPad on which I'll be editing all these videos, including this one. Uh, what else is in here? Um, all my clothes for the trip. And I think that's everything. That's everything. All that was in one of these panniers. Um, waterproof, super durable, reflective patches on them so I don't get hit. Um, big fan. I also ordered to sit up here an Ortlieb trunk bag, which I don't believe I'm going to need. I'm going to instead be strapping my tent here inside a waterproof stuff sack of its own. Um, and then attaching it with a couple of these volet straps. I'd never heard of these until a year ago. Now I'm a huge fan. Here's a picture of my collection of them over in the garage. And I'm going to be taking four of these 25-inch ones with me on the trip, yellow, so I get seen. And they're just what I need to hold things on the rear rack and on the front rack. Four volet straps. Of course, links to everything down below. Feed bags up here are by Revelate Designs. This is where I will have my snacks, my water, anything that I need to just grab handily, like a chapstick or whatever. Lots of little packs, places to pack stuff around these. Revelate feed bags. They're waterproof or very water resistant um, for snacks and water and that sort of thing. The water bottle that I'm drinking out of at any given moment will be stuck in here so I can easily get it in and out as I'm rolling down the road. Speaking of those volet straps, holding on my water bottles down here so they don't get bounced off are a pair of these modal straps, which are kind of like volet straps, just a little bit smaller, uh, very flexible, do all kinds of cool stuff with them. And that's what I'm going to be using to hold on those water bottles. Okay, now let's talk about bags inside the bags, like my first aid kit. All of these are by a company called C2 Summit, which I've been using for decades as a Boy Scout and now as a back bike packer. Um, this is a waterproof first aid bag. You can actually see the contents through this little window. Uh, it opens and closes just like every other C2 Summit dry bag, sack, whatever. This one holds three liters of first aid stuff. I'm going to do a whole video about my first aid kit because it's important. Boy Scouts. Um, other stuff sacks like that. This one holds, this is all my cook stuff, my stove, my um, utensils, 
food will be in here, that kind of thing, will be in a bag like this. Um, oh, and stuff that I absolutely positively can't get wet will be in what I call river bags. This one by Sea to Summit, they call their big river, five liters. These things are absolutely waterproof, super durable. So things that are like my sleeping bag will be up here in a deluge all day long, can't get wet. I'll use a river bag for things like that. Or even inside one of these Ortley bags, my tech, things that cannot get wet, I'll have in river bags because they're so durable and so super waterproof. I have no doubt that bags like this are just as waterproof and will probably last this whole trip, but better safe than sorry with stuff like that. This is much lighter. This is called dry silk by C2 Summit. This holds all my clothes. Um, I'm not exactly going to be a fashion plate on this trip. I'll have a couple of changes of clothes. That's it. Once I get to the Midwest and the temperature becomes, oh my gosh, unbearable, I might shuck some of the heavier stuff that I need to get through Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, and just keep lighter stuff. But everything's in here, all my clothes. In a C2 Summit, uh, I think it's called a dry silk, ultra silk, um, ultra silk. For sill, not silk, dry sack by C2 Summit. Other stuff, let's see. I mentioned that this thing is steel. That means it can rust. So happily, the good folks at Surly have put holes strategically in this where I can take my Bowshield T9 rust inhibitor and squirt all inside the frame this stuff every year or so so I don't get rust on the inside. This is rust and corrosion protection. And I hope it works. Don't want a rusty bike. Would probably take years to happen anyway, but still. Um, I mentioned up here is my drone mount. It's by a company called Anbi. I think it's only available through Amazon. Ordered directly from China. Hey, there's another country, China. There's also Japan, China. There's something from Taiwan on this bike. Anyway, um, more countries. It's a multinational bike. We're inclusive here. Uh, Over here. We have something I plan to be using every single day. This pump, this is by Lazign, and it's the high volume, not high pressure. Road bike tires, high pressure. These bad boys, high volume. With a digital gauge on the side, so I know exactly how much pressure I'm dealing with, and I'll be taking that off every day to check and fill my tires. Although, as I mentioned, with that tubeless system that I've got going, I don't think they're gonna be losing a whole lot of pressure. I'm really excited about that. Um, oh, water bottles. All the water bottles I'll be taking are by Camelback. This is a 21 ounce podium bottle because that's all that would fit down here. Um, the others are 24 ounce um, and I'll be carrying water all over the bike down here by the front fork, um, up here in my feed bag. When I'm in the desert for a while, I'll have water down here in the um, frame bag. Um, I need to carry a lot of water. That's a big deal. Okay, and one last thing here in the back, one last thing here in the back is this reflector. Um, keep me out of trouble. There'll also be reflectors on both the panniers there, but that big bright, bright splash of yellow should help to get me seen, and getting seen is gonna be what it's all about. This is also a reflector. I'll be wearing a bright colored vest or shirt or something um, to be seen. Being seen is crucial. And look what a friend made me for this trip to put on the back of the bike. Um, I think it's just totally awesome. I get it. I hope you do. I'm a little bit afraid that people are going to think that I want to knock on their door and teach them about religion. That's not what this is about. Do you get it? I hope most people do. Let me know if you understand what this is about. If you do, I'll go with it. If everybody's scratching their heads saying, I don't get it, I guess I won't. But I think it's totally cool. I think it's just. Anyway, I love it. So that's it for the bike. The design, the safety, the comfort, um, all the different bags that are going to be on it, and a few other bits and pieces of hardware. Uh, I am really excited about riding this thing 4,000 miles. Oh, I went on the internet last night because I've been obsessing about this trip and typed in how many pedal strokes per mile on a bicycle? And of course, I got all the caveats of it depends on what gear you're in, uphill, downhill, blah, blah, blah. But on average, it's usually about 250 pedal strokes per mile. 
and my plan is to go a little over 4,000 miles. So 250 times 4,000, it's a really cool number. Check it out. That's it for this video. Please like and subscribe if you find this interesting. The next videos will be about my camping equipment. Love to hear what you have to say about this one and those. Please use the comments down below to give me any suggestions about things that you would do differently than I've done or any questions you might have about all this. Again, there's a list of all 75 of these items with links to all of them down there in the comments. And thanks for watching. See you next time.